Hey everyone, welcome to another C3 Spectrum Church service online. So wonderful to have you here with us today. If it is your first time with us, love to get to know you. Hit that subscribe button. Um, if you like the service, we'd love everybody to give us a thumbs up. As much energy and activity that we have on our online site, it just keeps everything happening. So that would be really, really good. We'd love to get to know you. There is a chat site going on. So if you want to introduce yourself, if you're brand new, please do that. We would love to follow you up. We would love to get to know you. That would be wonderful. Just say hi and make some noise. Hey everyone, we are back on the 26th of July here on site as well as online as well. Um, and so that's a really exciting thing. So please put that date in your diary. So Sunday 9.30 here on site um, at Spectrum and um, also online. That would be wonderful if you can just, yeah, pop that in your diary and um, we cannot wait to um, kick off our Sunday services again. But in the meantime, we are meeting on Wednesday evenings. We're having encounter services and there is lots of prayer meetings going on midweek as well. And God is showing up, it is just wonderful. I also wanna commend all of our beautiful C3 Spectrum Church family, the way that you love one one another, the way that you're looking out for one another, all our ministries that are taking place um, from children right the way through to our elderly. Um, once again, it's just commendable. The love of God that's in your heart, you're just doing a wonderful thing and shining it out to those in your world. And we're having some incredible testimonies about people just sharing their heart and, and sharing the love of Jesus with those in their world. And just, um, yeah, just, just hearing some incredible um incredible stories there. That's what it's all about. Also want to thank everybody for your generosity. Gosh, we've got such a generous church. Thank you so much for the way that you are giving consistently into this ministry and helping us to just get the, the good news out to this community and beyond the good news about Jesus and the love of God, our wonderful Father in heaven. Um, if you would like to give today, there it's going to pop up on the screen now. So there's ways to give. So you can text give and also go online to c3spectrumchurch.com slash give. That would be wonderful. Can I just pray for you and pray for us right now? Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you that you are a wonderful Father in heaven. I want to pray, Lord God, today for the revelation of that, Lord God, just to land once again in every heart, Lord, of every listener. In Jesus' name, you are such a good, good Father. You are our provider. You are the one who loves us, Lord God. You protect us. You give us everything that we need. And Father, above everything, you've given us your son, Jesus. And Jesus, you have laid down everything to give us abundant life. And we just want to say thank you for that today. We welcome you into this service today, Holy Spirit. Come, come, come into this service, Lord, and into every single home and every space, Lord God, where the listener is today. Lord, I just thank you for your anointing, your incredible anointing of love, of abundant life and of breakthrough. And if you are needing a breakthrough in your life today, why don't you just hold your hands up and hold your hands out to God right now and say, Lord, I'm here and I'm ready for my breakthrough. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. We just want to go to that new level in you. And everybody said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to enter into a beautiful time of worship now with the wonderful Jess Stalder. So if you want to be upstanding, let's sense the anointing of God. Do you know that where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, He's right there in the midst. And if it is just you and me and Jess and our team here, you know what? Jesus is right there with you as well. Just reach out to Him. He has got everything that you desire and everything that you need on hand. And it's just a whisper away. It's just a prayer away. Big love. Bye. Amen. Let's lift our eyes. Let's lift our hearts. Let's lift our hands. Jesus, we thank You, Lord. You're present. You're here. You're with us, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Jesus.
from heaven our praise poured out with reckless abandon our worship God is holy us holy us Jesus holy us oh it's holy us Lord holy us Lord our worship our song Father, we take this chance, God, to come into your presence. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that there's no place like your presence. And we take this moment, Lord, to enter in, to fully engage, fully engage. Hearts wide open, eyes wide open. Awaken to your love, awaken to your life within us, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill every heart, fill every home, fill every person, fill every marriage, fill every man, woman and child, fill every family, fill every situation with your presence, with your glory. Jesus, we welcome you by your Holy Spirit. are watching right now just to breathe in breathe in the presence of God breathe in the life of God thank you Lord thank you Lord we enter in with praise and thanks we enter in with songs exalting you Jesus we lay our burdens down at the foot of the cross enter into your presence, Lord, this morning. Holy and worthy of every song we could sing, Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring.
see us standing right now, singing this, declaring this to walls, to mountains, to lies, to deceptions, to things that arise in our minds as the people of God, as the sons and daughters of God. And as we sing the Lord's goodness, as we sing, give thanks to the Lord and His love and endures forever, that armies of enemy armies, they start turning on themselves. Lord, we thank You in the place of praise. And we thank You in the place where we meet You face to face, where we sing of Your goodness and of Your love. Lord, we thank You, Lord, that that is our place of immunity and strength. Lord, that You're encouraging Your church right now in Jesus' name. You're encouraging Your sons and daughters to stand against the torrent. Lord, the waves. Lord, the assault of the accuser of the brethren. We thank You, Jesus, that there is no condemnation in Christ for those who are set free. Lord, we thank You from from sin and death into the law of perfect liberty. Oh, Lord, we say, everlasting love, your everlasting arms. We thank you for those that are in Christ. There is no condemnation for we are set free from accusation, from sin and death into your perfect law of liberty. So Lord, we step into that as our reality as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Eyes fully open, ears fully open, hearts fully awakened to your love this morning, ready to receive everything that you have for us in your perfect Word. We don't want to listen to it and go away and forget what we look like, but we want to listen to the Word of God and be transformed more into the beautiful image of Jesus Christ. So God, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts to receive this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Why don't we listen to our lead pastor Martin as he shares the Word. Morning Spectrum Church and all those that are joining us online this morning. Um, It's great to see you all again. Uh, In a couple of weeks, we'll be meeting in person on 26th of July, and I'm very excited about that. But until then, we're communicating online. We'll be doing it after that day online. But uh, this morning, I'm believing that the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, will reach into your hearts today. And anyone who's joined us online for the first time, you're very welcome. Um, This morning I've entitled our message, Race. That's it, 
race. Um, I want to talk and address some of the issues that are separating many people around the planet right now that I think um, need to be addressed from a gospel point of view and from the heart of God the Father. I'm going to do my best in about 30 minutes to do that this morning. Teach, preach, believing that the Holy Spirit will reach into your homes, into your hearts and begin to bring some reasoning. You know, when we look at the word race, it actually means our language, our history and our characteristics. And when we think about the intentionality of God, we think about the fact that he wants to actually do a supernatural work of transformation in our language, our history and our characteristics. He wants to do a change, a transformation. We need saving from our race if we're not born again. We need transformation out of where we find ourselves without Christ. If you're without Christ today, my prayer for you today is that the revelation of what I'm going to talk about today will reach into your heart and into your mind. This is the remedy. This is God's plan A for mankind. Why don't we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Bring revelation today. Allow me, Lord, to reach into to the scriptures and begin to present them in such a way that our hearts and our minds would receive something of, of the intention of your heart, Lord, to do what you want to do in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, you know, when we think about the word apologetic, so I think that word, it's a big word, I know, but basically it means to actually reason together an argument for a person's standpoint on a subject. And I, I want to I actually say this morning that I think apologetics is important right now to, to, to reason through what we, we're confronted with, with the weaponization of culture right now. I think that the weapon of choice for many people right now is culture. Um, to actually divide us. And so I want to make a point this morning to say that the core of the gospel message is reconciliation and it's to address the issue of race. That the core of the gospel message is a transformation of race. I want to start this morning in Romans chapter 12 and I'm going to use the, trans the paraphrased translation given to us by that great um, apostolic writer, and translator Eugene Peterson, who's now gone to be with the Lord, but left us a great heritage uh, with a message Bible. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. I want to stop there for a moment. It tells us that we need to place our everyday ordinary life before God as an offering. In one other translation, it says to give your life as a living sacrifice. So what does that mean? We're going to look at that a little bit more uh, deeper in a moment, but let's just read on. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. So there it's talking about the issue of focus. It's saying don't fall into the trap of allowing culture or broken culture around you to influence the way that you're going you're to live your life. The first challenge was to give our life as an offering and then it's saying Zoom out, look around and, and don't allow that to influence what God's called you to do. It goes on and says, you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what God wants you to do and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-informed maturity in you. So there's things we have to lay down. How do we give our life as an offering? What we have to understand about an offering is that we have to lay some things down. So when we're thinking about our everyday ordinary life, we, we need to do an audit on our life and think, well, what are some things that we have to just put on the altar and just lay them down? When we're thinking about the culture that's around us, there's things around us in the culture around us that are unacceptable to God. Things that we've inherited Things that, you know, when we think about culture, that word culture basically means our characteristics and our language and, and the things that bring identity. We right now have a confusion of identity in so many people, both within the church and with outside of the church. 
And, and it's important for us to understand the core of how we, we make sense of our identity as Christians. If you're a Christian here today, and, and I want to speak as a pastor inside of our church, um, that if as Christians inside the church, as believers, we need to make sure that we understand how we find our identity, how we discover that, and what foundation we draw from to actually secure our identity. What does that mean? Um, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, it says, This is written about the account of the descendants of Adam. When God created human beings, he made them like himself. So in a, in a human sense, God made mankind like himself. Now, if we understand the, the original Genesis, there was a, you know, there was a fall, mankind fell. But according to common grace, there's still, uh, in a broken sense, the image of God in everyone, everywhere, even sinful men and women, people without Christ, people who haven't, are unredeemed, people who have not come back to God, there's, there's in a common grace sense and the image of God surrounding us in every person everywhere. So we should treat people with dignity in a sense because of the image of God within them. But this is, a, it, this is something that's in the core of God's heart is that he wants to bring us back to the fullness of that image. That the core motivation of the gospel message, the core revelation and the core motivation of the assignment of the Holy Spirit is to bring us to a, into a place of realignment, bring us back into a place of fullness, that the image and the identity of God would be r redeemed in us through Christ. And that is the ransom that, that God the Father paid by sending His Son to bring us back to that place of fullness. But for that to happen, some things have to be laid down and some things have to be picked up. Now, follow me in this. Um, like I said, I'm going to do my best to do, this is a deep subject, but I'm going to do it in half an hour. Here we go. John chapter 3. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. This is Jesus explaining the mystery of the fact that we are born in a human sense in the flesh, but there's a spiritual birth. So when we're talking about being born into God's family, it's not something we sign up for. It's something we're born into. It's not like joining church. We're not just going to church and becoming a church goer. It's about being born through grace into God's family and discovering something of a transformation of our identity through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage anyone who's watching me right now that if you don't know God, allow him to speak to your heart about what this means to be born again or be born into his kingdom, to be rescued out of your present state if you struggle with any kind of thing, whether it's an addiction, whatever it might be, all of our brokenness is found within our, in a human sense because we're born of the flesh. I heard someone say once, you know, I can't help it, I was born this way. Well, be born again. It's in the born again experience that we find true freedom. Um, you know, so let's look at this whole thing. In, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about ethnic hatred. Now, we see a lot of ethnic hatred that's being displayed everywhere around the planet right now. There's all kinds of contentions and wars going on because of perceived ethnic hatred of, of um, you know, uh, all kinds of attitudes towards whatever race you are, whether you're black, white, whatever. Um, whatever origins you find yourself in a human sense, in a flesh sense, there's all kinds of argument going on. The core of the gospel message is freedom from any kind of hostility. It's a call out into a place of a new race. You know, I called this morning race, but really I, I could have called it a new race. A new race of people. You see, this is, this is the, the core revelation of the gospel message. In Ephesians 2, it says this, Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. Talking about Jesus. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been repealed by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us starting over, forming one new race of humanity. Jews and non-Jews fused together. So this is the power of breaking hostility, breaking separation. It's if you receive Christ inside of a, a spirit-filled believer is the potential for us to actually come into a place of such intimate unity that we, we lay down our old identity, our old racial identity, and we take on a new racial identity as heavenly beings, as the Holy Spirit clothes us 
and begins to baptise us in a new image, the fullness of the image of God being and his glory being renewed within us. And this is a process. It begins in an instant in our spirit and then the process begins to work. You say, well, I met a Christian and they don't look like they're, they have ethnic hatred broken over them. It's a process and a call of God by the Holy Spirit to bring us into a place of revelation that we can discover a oneness of unity. This is what Jesus paid the price for. This is what he died for. You know, so it goes on here and says in, um, in 1 Peter, this is Peter talking about it in chapter 2. And he says, but you are not like that, for you are a chosen people of royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. See, this is the identity that we're called into through the gospel message is an identity as God's family. You say, well, I find my racial identity in my own family, my family tree. You can trace your family tree back. You can, you know, you can go all the way back to the three sons of Noah. And, and that's really the origins of all of mankind. Um, but the reality is that in a human sense, we can do that. But when we become Christians, we discover a new identity as with one father, our father in heaven. And so our Father in heaven brings us into a place of identity as his people, his family. And in there we find incredible unity. You know, in Galatians 3, it tells us that, that there's, uh, uh, for you are all God's children through faith in Christ. All of you have been united with Christ in baptism, putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ and now you belong to Christ. You are the true children of Abraham. You are heirs of God. God's promise to Abraham, God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. In a human sense, the whole idea of the gospel message of unity of all the races of mankind inside of Christ began with Abraham. It was triggered in him, the idea of that. The gospel was preached to Abraham originally. Um, and the idea of reconciliation. So it's a no longer moment. It's saying you, there's no longer a separation of race, no longer Jew or Gentile. There's no longer um, male or female. What comes in is uh, into the reality of our identity is, is such a, um, an intimate reality of supernatural, incredible peace in our heart because we know we have one Father, one Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So we see here, it says here, for, this, was, this was the passion of God. Look at this. It says in 1 Peter 1, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life inherited from your ancestors. So he, he, he challenges the whole ancestral thing. And he says, this is what I did when I sent Christ to the cross. I paid a ransom. A ransom in the universe had to be paid for us to be redeemed back into that place of his family. So we can rediscover the fullness of our identity again as his family. Jesus pays the ransom to save us from what we've, been, we've inherited from our ancestral forefathers. You see, if we hold on to our, our earthly racial thing, we're hindering the purpose of the gospel. The purpose of the gospel is to save us from that. If we hold on to that, it's a, it's a form of idolatry. To, to cling on to our racial identity, our earthly racial identity, pushes back against the intention of the gospel, the core of the gospel, and, 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 and the price that Christ paid for us. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. So our heritage is found through that ransom that God the Father paid. And we look here in 2 Corinthians 6, it talks about our Father. It says, the work of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, come out from unbelievers and be separate from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy or their unclean things and I will welcome you. And I will be your Father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So this is a challenge. It's a challenge. The Scriptures tell us here that it's a challenge to come out and receive God as our Father. And even as Christians today, we need, to, we need to reason this in our own heart, that if we haven't fully accepted this, we haven't fully embraced the gospel. To actually receive the fullness of the gospel message, we need to come out from 
our unbelieving past deeply in our spirit because some of us are hanging on to our ancestral past more than we realise or acknowledge. We need to leave and let that go and embrace our identity as sons and daughters of our father. And then he says, I will be your father. You will be my sons and daughters. See, sonship, the spirit of sonship is is stepped into by by way of grace. And and, and it's, it's a... It's a, it's a step into a higher realm of revelation. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an ability to be open-hearted to say, Lord, I'm, I'm leaving my past behind and I'm stepping into that greater intimacy of you as you as my father. There's a cry in our spirit. You see, the work of the Holy Spirit is to build within us a hunger and a passion and a fire. I pray for you today that the fire of the Holy Spirit would burn within you to actually stir up a desire and a passion within you to have new levels of understanding of what it means to God's, to be God's children. Look at this in Galatians 4, it says, And because we are His children, God has sent His Spirit, the Spirit of His Son, into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. So when the work of the Holy Spirit is... is is allowed or permitted to be have free course in our heart, there's a cry that emerges out of us, Abba Father. We realise and acknowledge and receive in its fullness, God is our Father. No longer is there a confusion about identity or race or, or, or any kind of rejection or abandonment or accusation or hostility between the origins of our human, in a human sense, our, our ancestry or our race. We've stepped into a new identity. We've stepped into a whole new freedom. We've stepped into a new place of heritage, a new place of inheritance. And we are now God's children, God's sons and daughters. And this is the good news This is the gospel message. This is what Christ died for. This is the power of the cross at work in our life to transition us out of that old identity. The old is gone and the new has come. 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 23, it says, uh, sorry, verses 2 to 3, it says this, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. So this is an eternal identity. This is not something that is just in a human sense, confined to our human journey. A lot of times we we try and sort of make sense of our purpose, our sense of meaning in in a human way that we we think it's all about the earth earthy, about our our journey on the earth, our 80 odd plus years on the earth of however long we get in, in, in in our human life. But really it's about an eternal thing. It's about being born into an eternal family being brought back into a place of identity that we're born for eternity. 2 Corinthians 5 says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ becomes a new person. The old life is gone. Why don't you say that? Why don't you make that your confession? The old life is gone. When when you acknowledge that, in reality what you're saying is I've let go of my old ancestry. My old life's gone. What's been born inside of me is an eternal life a seed of eternal life. I have a new father in heaven. I'm now part of a new family. When you've stepped into that, you've stepped into true freedom. Hallelujah. It's exciting me. I'm hoping, it's, hoping this revelation's exciting you. So when we talk about language, we've got to realise that culture and language go hand in hand. If, if a culture loses its language, it begins to die. And, and, cult, and language is, is the expression of our culture. So we need to understand that when we step into, into freedom, as God, when God is our Father, we, we discover a new language, a redeemed language, a language of faith. So Christians, when we're born again, the Holy Spirit teaches us spiritual language. And I love this in 1 Corinthians 2, in verse 6, it says this, And we have received God's Spirit, not the world's Spirit, or not the Spirit of the world's heritage, not the, not the languages of the earth. We've had them, and, and, and you know, we have them in a human sense, but there's a, we've been introduced to a, a language of faith, a language of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches us revelation language. It goes on and says, So we know that the wonderful things God has freely given to us, 
When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. So we find here that the Holy Spirit brings revelation to us and we, we speak that out and we're, we're actually communicating in a different level, a different realm. We're actually been uh, born again into a place where we're operating and expressing a culture a language of the Spirit, a language of God's family, God the Father. You know, the other week when I was talking about the fact that Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me, I only say what the Father tells me. He's reaching into heaven, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to influence his language in how he operates. His life was an offering. Remember, we open up this morning about the fact that we give our life as an offering, our everyday life as an offering. It includes the way we speak, our language an operation of faith. Um, it goes on in verse 12 and it says, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive the truths from God's spirit. It sounds foolish to them. They can't understand it for the, only those who are of the spiritual life can understand what the spirit means. You see, in a, in a, in a, in a rational way, all the things that we do when we, we're born again seem a little silly. You know, it was the apostle Paul who was criticised in his ministry for being a babbler. You know, and some people, when they look at Christian things and Christian language uh, and spiritual language that we talk in, you know, especially faith, when we talk about faith, it can seem in a rational way a bit silly, a bit childish. But it's the language of the Spirit, you see. We're, we're now part of God's family and He wants us to understand how we can operate and we can put down human wisdom. We can, we've let that go. All of that which we've learned from our forefathers has been relegated to our old life. We've put that down and we've picked up this whole life of God and the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Even prayer seems foolish to people who haven't received Christ. Prayer as a language seems a little bit, you know, um, uh, strange. It's an enigma, but it's the language of the Spirit. Um, in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we're born again because God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond reach and decay, change and decay. So, so part of our whole expectation of life is that we have a heritage beyond this life in heaven itself. So, so our expectation, our values... Our, the way we talk, um, everything we do about our life is influenced by the fact that we have a heritage now. When you talk in a human sense about culture, about identity, about race, we need to understand that all those things um, influence heritage in a good way, in a bad way. But when God becomes our father, we have a new heritage. We have a new inheritance and so the whole idea, and this gets me excited, is that in heaven there's a heritage waiting for us all. Now receive that, that's good news. And it's preserved in heaven that cannot be corrupted. Have you ever had something, maybe you've received an inheritance in a human way and, and, and in some way it's either been lost or in, you know, something's happened in a, in, a fa in a family situation and that inheritance didn't work out the way it should have. Let me just say that when you've got a father in heaven, he promises us that we have a priceless inheritance in heaven because we're his children and it's sitting there without decay. Just receive that right now by revelation in Jesus' name. That's good news. Hallelujah. So, so there's a challenge here. When Paul writes to the Philippian church, he writes here about pushback and he's saying don't hinder the gospel by focusing on this human life above and beyond what you need to. And this can happen sometimes when we're hanging on to our racial identity as opposed to our new racial identity, which remember we saw it before, that, that there's no longer in a human sense race, but now we've been born into a new race of people, God's people. God is our Father. Philippians 3 says, For many walk of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping. So this is the Apostle Paul telling these Christians, crying, he's weeping. And he says, they are enemies of the cross. 
Notice we, we said before that, that the cross was the ransom paid for our salvation. Our salvation from what? Our salvation from, from the curses from our forefathers the, in an ancestral way, everything that was before us in a human sense, God has rescued us from and says, I want to be your father. I want you to get my, I want my identity be, to be yours. He calls us out. And he says, but these people are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, who glories in their shame, whose mind is set on earthly things, for our citizenship is in heaven. So he's talking here about the subject of identity. And he's saying here that we are enemies, we're pushing back from the gospel of Christ. We actually put ourselves in opposition against God when we hang on to earthly things. In other words, that incorporates racial identity, um, racial uh, inheritance, um, all the values and the things we hold dear to that. He's saying because our citizenship or our family, our place of identity is in heaven. Now, this is the great separator. You see, because when you receive Christ into your heart, you step into a whole new racial identity. You're in God's family. We have a new father. We've accepted Christ. And in that, when we call people in, this is the plan of God, call everybody into Christ. And in there we find an incredible unity. Come out of that which has hostility associated with it. If you're of one tribe and someone's of another tribe, what happens there is there's, there's tribal hostility. We weaponize our culture against one another. But when we come into Christ, we put down, we lay down everything that we've weaponized against each other. We step into a place of unity and intimacy and we find peace with each other through the cross of Christ. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly await for the Saviour, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the core of the gospel message. I mentioned before that Abraham received this in a human way. Way back in the ancient world, it says here in Galatians 3, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. So way back in the ancient world, God spoke to Abraham about the gospel, what he was going to do through him. He would begin this process in Abraham, fulfilling it in Christ, saying, in all the nations shall be blessed. So then in you, Abraham, all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with, with believing Abraham. So you see what happens here is the nations come into a place of blessing through the gospel. The ethnos, all of the races come to a place of blessing through the gospel message. I want to close today on the fact that uh, um, we find a vision of heaven in Revelation chapter 7. We look at this, the culmination of God's purpose. It shall be done. Nothing will stop this. This is a, an incredible passion. A ransom's been paid. This is the desire of the Father's heart and He will fulfill it in Christ. Look at this in Revelation 7. The vision of John the, the Apostle. After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white, and robes, uh, in white robes and held branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. I want you to receive the gospel afresh today. A gospel that rescues us from our past, from, from our, our identity that would bring hostility. And let's step in. If you're a Christian here today, be open hearted and allow the Holy Spirit to bring you into a place of new grace, new revelation of what it means to take a hold of God as our Father in a, in a, in a whole higher level of intimacy. As we do that today, won't we pray for that? Father, today, help us as believers to receive your love and the call of the gospel into a place of intimacy. Lord, if we've allowed ourselves to be dragged down to the culture around us, forgive us today. We don't want to enter into any hostility. We want to respond to the call that you want to rescue us all out of whatever tribe we belong to into a place 
of a new race. Your race. Your heavenly people. You are our Father and we are your sons and daughters. Maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Christ into your life. Maybe you're watching today and and you think, well, that sounds like I need to do that. Wherever you're from, whatever your history's been, Jesus died on the cross. He paid the price for you to accept Him, for you to give your life back as a response to the fact that He gave His life for you. As you do that today in prayer, He will transform your life. He'll bring you into a place of full acceptance. God will become your Father. If you've never done that, if you, what I've spoken today has spoken to your heart and you think, I can see that, I can see that God has done that for the world and I, I believe that personally. Why don't you give your life to Christ today? In your own words, just pray this prayer. Lord, I give my life to you. I need saving. Forgive me. I've been a sinner. I've been separated from you. Forgive me today. Just say it in your own words. You know, I know that I've been away from you, God. I pray today. I give my life to you right now. If you've done that, if you prayed that from the genuine place of your heart, if you've given your life to Christ, why don't you ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your heart? Say, Holy Spirit, come into my heart in a fresh way. Come into my heart. Make my life anew. You might not fully understand what that means, but I want to encourage you just to pray that prayer. The Holy Spirit will come into your heart if you genuinely ask Him from the the, the, the honesty of your own heart. The Holy Spirit will come and He'll change your life. If you've done that, if you prayed that prayer, I'd love you to respond either on the the YouTube uh, uh, engagement there. You can type and say, I've done that, or you can go onto our website, c 3 spectrumchurch.com on our our social media and just let us know so we can follow you up. We can give you a Bible and we can point you to a church. If you're in our local community, I want to invite you to church on the 26th of July and we'd love to be able to communicate with you. Why don't you give our, uh, you know, make yourself known on our social media. Um, For our church, I just want to encourage us all. Let's let's reread the gospel message. Maybe listen to what I've said today and have a look at at, at that and and give it a greater committed study in your own life and, and, and think about what the gospel really is about. So we're not dragged down, but we're lifted up. We're not torn and confused by what's around us, but we're stepping into a place of secure identity as God's people in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Jess is going to lead us in worship again just as we finish. Thank you.
blessed this morning and this week as you go out. In Jesus' name.